Welcome to the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zonos. Now, today, we got a few things to talk about. Trick or treat. It's the day after Halloween, but some teams in college football had a nightmarish weekend. First off, let's start out with Florida State. I talked about how that would be possibly a Halloween-type night for Clemson, but they were able to pull that out late. Clemson took the soul from Florida State on Halloween. 37-34 was that score. Deshaun Watson played great. 27 for 43, 378, two TDs. Except he did have the two interceptions. I let him slide because he threw for almost 400 yards uh, and over for 50, over 50 percent. So I let him slide with the two interceptions, but you can't turn the ball over. Also, Mr. Wayne Gallman. They ran Wayne Gallman way too much after a concussion. 20 carries for 88 yards and uh, excuse me, 82 yards and two TDs. I don't like that uh, simply because. Yes, he produced a little bit, scored those two touchdowns potentially in the red zone. I didn't watch the entire game. But when a guy's coming back off of a concussion, who's your starting running back, your star on the backfield, why would you take that particular player and put them in position to take repeated blows to the head over and over, knowing that you need them down the stretch to even complete compete if you do get in the playoff? So I really didn't like giving him the ball 20 times simply because they said he was cleared and healthy. I still want to manage the way that I feed him, maybe 10 or 12 carries, some passes out of the backfield, just to conserve him because we don't know um, what he's like, his particular body after concussion. Didn't like that at all. Jordan Leggett, NFL lottery pick for sure. Five receptions for over 100 yards, one TD. He's turning into a big play threat for Clemson. I really like Leggett. I like this guy. He's a senior tight end. He's looking a little bit like uh, Mercedes Lewis when he was at UCLA, a little bit like Antonio Gates in his younger days with the Chargers. This guy is running down the field past DBs. He's bigger. He's stronger. He's winning all the 50-50 balls. I heard Alshon Jeff Jeffrey say last night he calls him an 80-20 ball. Well, Mr. Leggett is making plays. Also, for FSU, Dalvin Cook, he went off, but it wasn't quite enough. 169, four TDs, great game. However, Florida State, 13 penalties with over 100 yards. How do you get 13 penalties over 100 yards at home in your home stadium when you know you got to play well against the top team in the country like Clemson? They're a top team in the country. Um, I mean, they had more penalties than a soccer shootout. I don't, I don't really know what to say contributed to that, uh, but I think you got a lot of young guys there at Florida State. Yes, you have Dalvin Cook, but you've got a lot of new guys who are filling in at DB this season, and as well as a lot of fresh offensive linemen. So Florida State, they've got a lot of work. They'll be a good team in a few years with DeAndre Francois, the redshirt freshman. However, he needs to develop a lot more too. We can see that it's been a growing process for him. Not everybody's off to the races like Lamar Jackson being a sophomore and towards the end of his year last year as a freshman doing what he did, uh, or Deshaun Watson, what he did as a freshman. People just don't typically do that. Give DeAndre Francois time to develop. Also, Wisconsin, they beat Nebraska, of course, in OT 23-17. What did I say the other day? Nebraska, they are the kings of losing games like these. They can never win the close ones. We've seen that with the Martinez's. The Burkheads, everybody who's been in Nebraska has been involved in those close losses. They just can't seem to do anything in the games that matter, the games that get them in the BCS, the games that get them into the big bowl games. They they have never been able to get into those games because they lose the ones that matter, like I said. Um, also, two overtimes in a row for Wisconsin. You wonder if they'll get a little bit of that SEC syndrome where they beat each other up all year in that conference and then they get to the play, to the bowl games and people wonder why they lose so many bowl games. Well, I think it has a lot of factors that contribute to the way the SEC does in bowl games some years because some years they're up, some years they're down. But everybody knows historically the SEC tough competition takes a toll on those teams. So they beat each other up and lose a few games at the end of the year because everybody's playing everybody and everybody's playing well and hard. Um, also, Tommy Armstrong Jr., uh, he doesn't seem to show up in these big games 
like I said, Nebraska, Nebraska, Nebraska. They Tommy Armstrong Jr. 12 for 31, 153 yards, two interceptions. Get ready for running back in the NFL, sir. You're a great athlete, Tommy Armstrong, but as far as playing quarterback in the big game, I think you have not put out enough footage to say that you are an NFL quarterback. I just think that he's a great athlete. You're a great athlete, Mr. Armstrong, but for the next level of the NFL, I just don't think that you'll be in that type of position just because you forfeited that chance with these type of performances. 12 for 31? Come on, Mr. Armstrong. You've been the quarterback for years for Nebraska. Didn't like that at all. But Wisconsin, can they stay healthy? Can they continue to win? They played a lot of tough games back to back to back. You know, they had to go uh, to Michigan. Then they played Ohio State, uh, went to Iowa, and then they just get done with Wisconsin. So, I, look, I mean, excuse me, they just get done with Nebraska. So, Wisconsin, can they keep it going? Also, who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who? Washington beats Utah 31-24. to Jake Browning balls out. Two TDs, ball so hard. People want to find him. I mean, Dante Pettis did his best Ricky Bobby impression when he shook and cooked that uh, Utah defense and takes it back to the house for a punt return, a long punt return at that. Wins the game for Washington. Washington, they're in the driver's seat of a Benz, headed from Seattle straight to the playoffs. I mean, they're winning games. They're winning all the games they're supposed to win. What they say over and over and over all year on TV is win the games on your schedule and you'll be in. And that's exactly what they're doing. So we can't sit here and say that we can't reserve a spot for Washington. Uh, also, um, later on in college football throughout the day, if you watch throughout the day, you notice one team... They creep, yeah, keep it on the down low. Louisville, 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 Louisville sneaks out with salt and sugar packets from that game against Virginia. Lamar, you saved the city, sir. He throws a touchdown pass with, I think, 12 or 13 seconds left, wins the game for Louisville, keeps their playoff hopes alive. Keep up alive. He did do that. Lamar Jackson, he's a guy who is setting himself up to potentially win the Heisman for the University of Louisville. Now, that's a big award for the city in itself. However, this win means a lot more, simply because Tennessee losing this weekend, and I'll get to that in a moment, really opens things up for Louisville to say that they are the best one-loss team. Because what you don't want is to be in a cluster of a few good one-loss teams and then end up being talked about in a discussion, and it's either you or them. That's what you don't want. But Louisville, they're they're in a good spot. Lamar Jackson, four TDs. He's placed himself in position, like I said, to win the Heisman, hands down, getting a lot of first place votes already. Uh, I watch TV. Tony Kornheiser, Mike Wilbon. They say things. This kid's great. He's great. Lamar Jackson. He's a magician out there on the field. Also, West Virginia and Boise State and Baylor. They were all undefeated. Now they're not undefeated. AKA Finito finished and Tennessee loses their third straight game um, yesterday Jalen Hurd decides to transfer funeral song for the Tennessee Volunteers as they shoot in the air at the funerals but yeah Tennessee their season looks like it may be wrapping up earlier than expected earlier than I expected I will say that a lot of the injuries that we've seen uh, on this team have contributed to many of their losses. However, I mean, you can just see this team looks drained. All that playing from behind, it's like trying to finish homework and turn it in before class starts. All that playing from behind has really caught up to these guys. It's really taken a toll on Tennessee. And we see that you got to play good football for a full game because losing a game to a team like South Carolina, that's not very good. You lost to Texas A&M, Alabama, and then South Carolina. Come on, guys. I mean, pick yourselves up. I know you got a lot of injuries, but you still have to finish the season out. So we'll have to see what happens with the Vols. Now we move over to NFL Heat. The Pats smack old Rex Ryan and the Bills um, with a hammer named Tom Brady. That was 41-25. to The score was a lot worse than it seemed. They scored late, the Bills did. Uh, Brady was 22 for 33. 300 yards, 4 TDs, no interceptions. The man's hot, hot, hot. Hotter than one of those ghost pepper fry packets from Wendy's. I mean, Tom Brady is on a mission this year to show the NFL that they are wrong, he is right, 
And I think he could actually be the 12 game MVP. 12 game MVP, shout out to Tommy B. So I really think that he's a guy who could do it. Bengals and Skins tie in London. Josh Norman, stop complaining and scrape your toes, sir. I think, Josh Norman, you're so mad because you're getting burnt. You're getting burnt like bottle rockets on the 4th of July, okay? You need to D up, stop grabbing people, pulling on that jersey, D up, and stop complaining. I mean, you know they could call pass interference on you, sir. Come on. There's a five-yard rule. They're changing the game for defense. It's, it's, it's hard to play. Work on your craft, man. You can't play like you played in college, man. I mean, work on your craft, learn how to run with those defenders and keep your hands off of them. Maybe you won't get as many flags. Uh, but Green Bay also lost again to Atlanta. Atlanta, no picks by any team in this game. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and Matt Ryan both played okay. Atlanta, they really just find a way to win. I mean, they can outscore people. They're, they're, they don't have Tevin Coleman, and they don't have... Um, a few other guys, but they they are uh, a, a really good team with Julio Jones and Rodgers there in the backfield. Jaquiz Rodgers, uh, well, excuse me, he, Jaquiz Rodgers is with the uh, is with the Buccaneers. Devontae Freeman, excuse me, they've got a great running attack. I still like that Atlanta offense. I really do. When Tevin Coleman comes at comes back, especially they'll be great. Injuries, it's cutting the cheese on Green Bay. I mean, Clay Matthews not playing. Eddie Lacy, James Starks, both starting running backs out. That's really hurting that team. So I don't know where they'll go from here in the season, but hopefully they can continue to find ways to win games. Uh, the Panthers, they win versus the Cardinals. Cam still salty talking about he's not safe. Nobody's safe. I mean, Cam, come on, man. Just play football. Don't complain about it. You got the win against the Cardinals, 30-20. to 20. So just focus on changing your game, your, your style of play. Slide how you slide. The refs, they'll get it right. They hear you talking about it, but... Every week you're standing up there in front of the camera and looking salty. I mean, come on, Cam. You you won MVP last year. I mean, yeah, your team's not doing as well this year, but get up there and stand up there like an adult and talk to the media and stop pouting every Sunday when I see your post-game interviews, man. You're better than that. You're from Atlanta. Come on, Cam. And also, Dak wants Jerry to love him. Jerry, just love old Dak Prescott because he's been balling, beats the Eagles in overtime, beats Carson Wentz. Um, he's not Tony. No, he's not. But Dez got cracking. Zeke got cracking. I mean, they have good chemistry going on in, in Dallas. So, Jerry, 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 Jerry. Don't break that up, sir. Don't break it up, Jerry. And also, the Vikings starting to smell like pilgrims they lost to the bears sam bradford will he become sam bradford i mean it was halloween yesterday only thing that he doesn't probably dress up for is halloween is a consistent quarterback so i mean all he's got to do is be himself on halloween and that's a nightmare because traditionally in the nfl sam bradford hasn't been great and i think that now we'll start to see this figment of our imagination of a good successful sam bradford in the nfl turn into what we now know and have seen for the past few years. Somebody who's mediocre in my Richard Sherman voice? Hmm. Also, NBA ballers. Warriors still look like Chiefs Pizza. They're barely beating teams like the Suns. I mean, they got to get their chemistry together. I don't know if it took Miami this long. I know it took them a few games, 10 or 11 games. Uh, but the Warriors have got to find a way to work with what they have in different packages kind of like a football game. You have a nickel package. Who's going to be their nickel package lineup? Will they mix in Draymond with Iguodala? Will they mix in KD uh, with... I don't like KD playing with Jaja. I don't like Jaja on the floor. I feel like he slows that whole unit down. Um, if they're going to go small, I think they should just go small and for stretches where they need to rest, they can put in defensive-based lineups to maybe not run up and down as much with their offense, but that are centered basically just for defense. So have Iggy mix with Jaja on the floor. Do all that, and let's see how that works so that when you bring your scores back in, you can then run and gun because you played sustained defense over a short period while they were resting. So that way, you give them time to do what they do best, which is shoot, pass the ball up the floor, shoot, 
pass the ball up the floor. So that's what the Warriors need to probably do, in my opinion. Also, Russell Westbrook, he's on a mission to extract Kevin Durant's basketball existence. He thinks he's a bum. And Russell Westbrook will go out every night to prove to everyone that watches him on TV that Kevin Durant is a bum. And triple-double machine, he's already got two, two, two triple-doubles in three games. He won't stop until he waves his trophy at Kevin Durant in his face. He will not stop. So I really think that the Oklahoma City Thunder, they have a shot in the West if Russell Westbrook plays hard like he does every night. People are like, oh, can he do that for 82 games? Have you seen Russell Westbrook's body? Have you seen the way he explodes from the ground? That man is in his prime. He will not get tired. These are the glory days. Russell Westbrook may not be the guy that plays until he's 36, 37, but he plays so hard, we won't even care about that because this guy right here gives it all, which I think will be a, worth a lot more than just cruising in the league for the last three or four years of his career, like a lot of guys in the NBA do choose to do, Mr. Paul Pierce. You didn't hear that, though. But that's neither here nor there. World Series action. Game 6 World Series tonight comes on tonight. Indians up 3-2. Uh, they jumped up on those Cubs. The Cubs managed to win Game 5. And stay in the series. Didn't have to give the championship trophy away yet. However, I don't think that the Cleveland Indians will go another day without finishing off the Bernstein Bears. I mean, now they must beat the best, though. Arietta and Hendricks. Can they do it? Game 6, Game 7. I don't think the Cubs can go to Cleveland and win both games. I think they really messed themselves over when they didn't win two at home. So that doesn't look good for them. Um, all pressure lives in Chicago. I'd say that the Cubs fans and the Cubs as an organization, they, it's been so long without winning a World Series, what, 1908, that they feel this sense of pressure. And you can see it on TV. The TV screen's about to crack at the seams when you watch their games because of how these fans and, and players, how they look and how tense they look. But you look at Cleveland, I mean... Cleveland, they have fun. They just go out there. They know it's a game. They know it's fun. And they take all that and they soak it up. Lindor, you see him cheesing every five minutes. Lindor, keep enjoying yourself. That's what I think uh, will set the Clevelands apart from the clubs at the end of, Cubs at the end of the day because they are enjoying the game and play free. The club, Cubs are paying too, playing too tight. I don't like that. They do, get, they do get Schwarber back tonight as a DH which I think will help them out a lot as far as hitting goes because they've been dry with the bats here lately. But I don't think they just have enough to go back to Chicago and have a parade. So, Believeland, we'll see what you guys do. Um, I think that, that that trophy by LeBron, they feel like anything's possible. So, we'll have to see what the Cleveland Indians do to close out the World Series if, in fact, they can do it. Next show, Thursday, we'll talk about some weekend action. And I know that college basketball is coming up. I know it's close. I know I can smell Grayson Allen down there in North Carolina. We'll get to all that talk next week. I'll have a preview show for you guys on college basketball. But until then, thanks for watching the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zonos.